So I'm reading this news article. It's uh, three years old. It's about a 30-year-old Chinese Canadian woman, whom you know, from her early 30s to her early 50s. In the beginning, she had type 2 diabetes. She was five foot two, 180 pounds, and she had anxiety, insomnia, etc. All these problems. So after taking ginseng capsules for 20 years, she basically lost 40 pounds. Um, you know, all her health problems went away, her diabetes went away, and basically it sounds like her, you know, skin was good, her immunity was good, etc., etc. So it seems like ginseng is a miracle cure-all. In many ways, the claims of the people who are true believers in the powers of ginsenicides um, mirror that of, you know, what I've been seeing in my own body transformation. Of course, that's just weight training and really nothing else but maybe a few changes in diet but you know I think in the process of gaining muscle and losing fat I must be doing something right essentially I'm training my body to work the way it's supposed to work okay it's day 115 here's my backup plan 10 new ginseng seeds from Amazon and here's a powder bottle of gibberellic acid. It's a plant hormone, very basic one, that's supposed to aid with growth and germination. So if you add too little, you get nothing. If the concentration is too high, though, uh, you'll get no germination. And if you have already germinated plants, they'll grow so tall that they'll fall over and break from their own weight because the internodes are too long. So I dissolved it in mostly water, distilled water, but there's a 1.2% ethanol in there. You need some ethanol or isopropanol to dissolve it in, and I elected to use ethanol because it's a lot less poisonous to plant and animal tissues. So for the ginseng seeds, the backup, you know, I, I bought this on Amazon, and I'm hoping they'll work, but it's almost like a conspiracy where... At this time of year in March, there's basically nothing being sold. So in September, that's really the prime time to be buying seeds because that's when they're fresh and lots of people supply them. Right now, there's almost none. So it was almost like the whole ginseng sale last fall never happened. And again, they kind of look like dried up pieces of dog food, basically. So let's hope that these things can go somewhere. Okay, since there's 1.2% ethanol in these solutions of gibberellic acid, I have to keep these without any kind of plastic wrap. So the ethanol will evaporate pretty quickly over the next few hours, and hopefully this will trigger a response. I didn't put any hydrogen peroxide in here. In retrospect, I probably should have because I read somewhere else that that's what they did. I don't know if it was the same paper or whatnot, but it's... Apparently fine, the hydrogen peroxide shouldn't destroy anything. So this is the state of the seeds right now in the PC group. I felt like the PC group needed a boost and I'm using this group for another test condition which is incubation with gibberellic acid because it's lagging behind the development of the sunlight group. So sunlight's definitely important. Uh, these are the 10 new seeds so they're still kind of dirty obviously mold is a concern and you know hopefully this will get these things going pretty soon so after 24 hours i swapped out the solution containing the ga3 with just 0.5 percent hydrogen peroxide again it says not to incubate for over 24 hours okay it's day 122 and for the pc group let's see if anything happened so it was more or less like this than before. I tried treating with the GA3, the 20 milligrams per liter. So I've read some additional literature that suggests that maybe this is the wrong amount. I think that paper that I read was for somatic embryogenesis. You know, when you cut up plants into little pieces, if you put them in the proper kind of cell culture with various hormones, then they can each become a new plant or most of them. And you can do that with many species, but those are for those kinds of embryos, and these are just natural stratified seeds. So I think I'll have to up the dosage later. I'll um, check out the other group, and you know, if nothing happens for a few days, I'll try to go for a higher concentration. 
So let's see what happened with these backup seeds. Um, it's usually around this hot under the lamp light. And that could be a problem too because I think I read somewhere that maybe 17 Celsius is the optimal developing temperature for American ginseng. But that could be only about mature plants, you know, I'm not sure about germination. So, yeah, I can't really tell that anything's happened. My gut feeling is that these seeds don't look very robust, you know. Okay, I've decided to up the ante. I've made a solution that is 500 milligrams of gibberellic acid per liter. So we'll see what that does. So I had to stop the gibberellic acid soaking for the backup group at 42 hours instead of the original three days that I wanted because it's growing mold. You can see filaments kind of like underwater dust essentially emanating from all these seed husks. So I just did several rinsings with 0.5% hydrogen peroxide. I hope that can kill the mold and save these seeds. If not, it looks like this backup root will be a bust. You can see all the bubbling, you know, as the hydrogen peroxide is reacting with the mold. All right, for the PC group, it got 27 hours of exposure to this much higher concentration of gibberellic acid. And I'd like to say that there's been positive development, but honestly, I can't even tell. Um, I'm not sure that this gibberellic acid dose did anything. And this is kind of the recommended dosage for a lot of different plants. So they say you can soak for up to three days at this concentration for really hard to germinate seeds. But I figured, you know, since these seeds have been stimulated and hydrated for so long, maybe they didn't need three days. Well, I'm starting to rethink that. All right, it's day 131. It's been another week. Let's see what happened to the PC group. So you know I've had one supposed correct dosage treatment of gibberellic acid GA3 at 500 milligrams per liter for over a day and I've had these under continuous lamp light which is akin to low intensity sunlight and nothing's happened so far. You know they look basically almost the same so Unless I need to incubate these with GA3 for a much longer time, I think this whole gibberellic acid thing might be a bust. So now it's time to take a look at the state of the backup seeds. Boy, some backup plant, huh? This has been the worst group by far. I think just the fact that I bought them in March means that I was sold non-viable seeds. And we still got some floaters, two floaters out of the ten. I can still see a lot of mold down there, so I'm going to go ahead and pick out the ones that look moldy to me and peel them apart and see what the problem is. So I put on some nitrile gloves, and these things are really hard to peel apart if they're basically in a non-viable state like I think these are. And that one just has a bunch of mold in it. I can't even see a seed embryo, and these are just so flat and hard that I can't even peel them apart. But, you know, the fact that they're so flat kind of suggests that they don't have seed embryos inside. And if I go back and look at these, you know, these look slightly more promising. But compared to the seeds in the other two groups, this is a pretty high non-viable failure rate. So I'm very disappointed in these seeds. I'm enacting a very significant change here. I'm putting these three Pyrex bowls on top of a speaker box so they're much closer to the lamp light. It's uh, 1080 lumens. I'm in the process of getting a lux meter that'll tell me the intensity of light in various places around the house and really help me in my quest for germination. But I think this will mimic natural sunlight. See if we look at the other one, um, basically the, the dirt group which I haven't shown for quite some time because I haven't seen any activity. This bowl used to dry out a lot because this is natural, very fine mineral soil. It dries out very, very quickly under the lamp light. And outside, it would probably dry out even quicker. So no progress there, although I do have some mystery plants germinating. So check those out on my YouTube channel. 
So I got really excited on day 134 in the morning because it looked like I had germination here, but you know, everything's kind of distorted underwater. So upon closer inspection, it does seem like almost all of the seeds in this group have developed, you know, significantly just by being in so-called low intensity full direct sun for 3 days, but you know, I'm not going to hold my breath, but it looks pretty positive. All right, I've had these seeds in much more intense lamplight over the last nine days. And I think for the sunlight group, it still looks the most promising. It's kind of suggesting that, you know, light or sunlight has an even more pronounced effect than exogenous hormones. So for many of these seeds, um, it appears that they have the beginnings of a root system sticking out. Although, since progress is so slow, I'm always hesitant to claim any kind of success because this could all go south very easily. But, you know, the one in the center seems to have something hanging loose or peeling off. So for the PC group, it seems like there's been a little bit of progress as well. Uh, three of these on the left side in particular look like they have seed embryos that are sticking out pretty far from the seed husks. I'm not sure if that's just a function of seed husks slowly degrading over time, but I gotta say the seeds in this, the PC group seem bigger than those in the sunlight group. Maybe that's just a function of the husks um, degrading slower in the absence of light for all these months. So we'll see what happens. I think that I can make a claim that uh, powerful light is more important than treating with gibberellic acid at this point. So for the backup group, um, I threw away the four seeds that were very moldy and that I suspected had nothing inside the seed husks. These remaining six are largely mold-free, but they're not very promising. I consider this group to be, for all purposes, lost. So I finally got a lux meter off of Amazon. This measures light intensity. If I put it flat on the cushion there, you know, that's 1,000... 50 times 10, that's 10,500 lux. I raise it up here to multiplication factor is 100. So this is above 40,000 lux, very close to the bulb. And I'm going to get that box for reference and kind of shove it to the back and try to position this lux meter under the bulb in a way that simulates very closely the distance between my elevated Pyrex dishes to this bowl. So according to my best estimates, the seeds are getting over 40,000 lux these days. That's 400 something on this meter times the factor of 100 as you can see. So that's a fourfold increase just by putting the Pyrex bowls on top of this box. And you know, a 10,000 lux intensity is sort of equivalent to a daytime shade with light reflecting from the sky all around and surrounding objects. Whereas 40,000 is in many ways kind of a oblique direct sunlight, um, but still not comparable to high noon sunlight at nearly 120,000 lux.